Hi everyone and welcome to Learn Neuroradiology. I'm Brent Weinberg and today we're going to learn a little bit about a CT of the face, how to approach it, and a nice search pattern for going through CT of the face. So when you see CT of the face, most commonly it's going to be done for trauma. Uh, the most common traumas you're going to see are motor vehicle accidents or car accidents. Assault you'll see pretty commonly and uh, many times these exams are going to be combined with CT of the head with or without a CT of the cervical spine. So many of times you're going to be looking for osseous abnormalities and soft tissue injuries. Sometimes you're going to see them done to evaluate for known or suspected osseous abnormalities and sometimes you're going to see them done for facial swelling. Now many times these can be done without contrast, but if there's any concern for infection, you should give intravenous contrast. Now your general pattern when you're looking at CDs of the face, you really want to rely on your reconstructions, particularly the coronal. The coronal is a key part of your exam. The axial is a nice addition. Uh, the sagittal you don't have to use too much, but it's nice for checking uh, the mandible, the TMJ, and the upper cervical spine. And as a general rule, I try to go from the top to the bottom. So if you think about going from the top of the exam to the bottom, then that will work nicely. Two key points that I want to add in here. So symmetry from left to right is really, uh, really helpful. That's why coronal and axial are more useful than sagittal. And then fat is super helpful. So if you see nice, clean fat, uh, you probably know that you don't have too much of a problem. So like I said, start with the coronal and uh, then you're going to start with the soft tissues and work your way down. So go through the brain, orbits, the sinuses, look at the masticator space and peripharyngeal space, and then the facial soft tissues. And then you're going to want to repeat that with the bone. So again, go through the bones in the same order, orbits, sinuses, through the palate and jaw and the upper cervical spine. Here I've pulled up a CT of the face. In the left-handed window, I have the axial soft tissue windows. In the right window, we have the coronal soft tissue windows. And as I mentioned, you can start from the top and go to the bottom. So I usually start by taking a look at the brain structures. Uh, even though these are commonly done with a CT of the brain associated with that, you may want to darken your window a little bit and take a look up here. Make sure that you're not missing any hemorrhage. Be sure that you're not missing a mass or hydrocephalus. So kind of scroll through that brain, like feel confident that what you're seeing there is, uh, is okay. You can check out the ventricles a little bit there. And then once you're happy with that, you can go back to your, to your soft tissue windows and come forward and again, work your way down. So we'll start with the orbits. So here we have the orbits. You can see that they're nice and symmetrical bilaterally. You can see the intraorbital structures here. So here you have the optic nerve, which is the centermost structure in the orbits. Here you have the extraocular muscles. Usually you can see the five largest extraocular muscles here. So you have the medial rectus, lateral rectus, superior and inferior rectus, and then you also have the superior oblique there. And then this little structure that you see here is probably the superior ophthalmic vein. So that's a larger structure. You're probably not going to see the ophthalmic artery because it's just too small. But what we can see here from the orbits is that the fat is nice and clean. We don't have any blood in it. We don't have any edema, anything that looks like stranding there. We can also see that it's in a normal position. Um, as you come anteriorly, what you're going to see is you'll see the lacrimal gland uh, out here in the supralateral orbit, and then you'll see the globe itself. And again, around the globe, you shouldn't see any uh, abnormal fat. And then you can also see from here that the orbital roof is uh, nice and clean there. And so once you're satisfied that the orbit looks okay, then you can take a look at the sinuses. So when you're on the soft tissue windows, you really want to be looking for any soft tissue pacification of the sinuses. Here you have the ethmoid air cells, maxillary sinuses here, and the nasal passages. As you go posteriorly, you're going to come into the sphenoid sinuses. Again, these are nice and clean, so you don't have uh, fluid levels there. You don't have any blood or anything like that. As you work inferiorly, then you can check out the oropharynx. Uh, you can see the floor of the mouth here, so all the mouth structures look normal. You have the masticators here on either side. Here you're seeing the zygomatic arch. Again, all of the fat around these structures looks normal. So this is a nice, normal CT of the face. And then finally, as you work down, you want to check these lower soft tissues. You want to make sure they're nice and symmetrical. You don't see anything abnormal about the fat there. 
here I've now switched over to the coronal bone windows. You can see the bones are much sharper, but again, you want to take a top to bottom approach. So here we have the frontal portion of the calvarium. Here you see the frontal sinuses, so they're nice and symmetric. No disruption of the bones there. You can see the anterior skull base here, the cribriform plate, and the crystagalli here. You have the frontal sinuses coming into the ethmoids there, so ethmoid air cells here. The orbital roofs here are nice and smooth. We don't see any uh, disruption of that orbital roof. And so what we're looking at is for any abrupt disruption uh, that would indicate that there's been a fracture or other injury. As you come posteriorly, you're going to come through the pituitary fossa and you get into the middle cranial fossa here, which looks normal. Now, as you work your way down, again, you want to check the orbits. So take a look at the orbital walls. So here you can see all the walls of the orbit. So you have the medial orbital wall here, which is commonly um, blown out, so to speak. You have fractures of the ethmoid there. You have the orbital roof. Uh, again, a fracture of the floor of the orbit is quite common. So be looking for any disruption of the orbital floor there. Here you can see the infraorbital foramen, the uh, trigeminal nerve passes and that's intact here, so that looks nice. So the orbit is looking nice and intact here. And then work your way down, so look at the, all of the sinuses. So here we're seeing the maxillary sinus. All the walls of the maxillary sinus look nice and symmetric as you go through, and no disruption of those walls. The nasal septum is nice and midline. You have the turbinates here, so you've got uh, three turbinates, and the ethmoid air cells, they look nice. Now, finally, work your way down to the palate. So you see the palate is nice and smooth. You don't have any fractures through there. And then the mandible, you want to take a nice look at. Mandible fractures, again, are very common with trauma. And here you see a little metallic ornamentation there. Some of you may have seen it as we went through the first time. But again, take a look at the mandible. You're looking for any areas of cortical disruption. Here you're seeing some areas where there's some dental decay and periapical lucency, so a little bit of dental disease there. Uh, but no big deal. Here's another little superficial uh, piercing. And as you come back, you're going to see the posterior part of the mandible. And here's where it articulates with the temporal bone and the temporomandibular joint. So that's articulating in a nice and normal location. And finally, as you work your way down, you want to check the upper cervical spine. So you may not always have a separate cervical spine study. So here you see the articulation between the occipital condyles and C1. C1 and C2, the dens here, you want to make sure there are no fractures and the alignment is normal. Here you're starting to see a little bit of degenerative change up here, which is, well, not normal, but extremely common and uh, nothing to worry about on this study. Once you've gone through your coronal search pattern, I recommend you then go into axial. On the axials, what you're going to do is take a similar approach to the coronals. Take a look at the soft tissues first, working your way down from the top. So looking at the brain, orbits, sinuses, through to the masticators and peripharyngeal space and the facial soft tissues. Then take a look and go back through and look at the osseous structures. Here I brought up the axial soft tissue windows and I've kept the coronal on the right just so we can see for comparison. Again, start from top to bottom and work your way down. So here you can see the brain. Again, you're looking for symmetry of those brain structures, any hemorrhage, contusion, anything that you that you might have missed on the coronal images. Here you're seeing these inferior portions of the anterior cranial fossa here. Uh, here you might uh, be alert for any hemorrhage or anything like that. Uh, so you see all the brain structures there. Uh, so you feel pretty happy with those. You can scroll your way back up now and take an axial look at the orbit. So here in the central orbit, you're seeing the globe. Here you're seeing the optic nerves bilaterally, the medial and lateral rectus here. You see the globe here, you catch the lens here, so it's important to look at the lens, make sure it's anteriorly located, make sure that it's relatively symmetric with the anterior chamber here. You don't wanna have a lens that's uh, dangling like a trapdoor there, that would be a displaced lens. And then as you just go through, you can see the inferior portion of the orbit, so the inferior rectus here, and you can catch a little bit of the floors of the orbit, but you can see on the axial, it's considerably more difficult. Now we'll go down on into the sinuses. Again, you're looking for symmetry here. 
I'm just going to window this a little wider here so we can see this fat. So when you're looking at the maxillary sinuses, pay careful attention to this retroantral fat here. When that fat is relatively preserved, uh, you're unlikely to have an injury or infection or anything. Uh, but you can see the maxillary sinuses here look, uh, look nice and normal. You can check the remaining sinuses. So here you have your ethmoids. You don't have any fluid in there or anything. Your sphenoid sinuses, again, are clear. If you come forward, then uh, your frontal sinuses look clear as well. So you're happy with the sinuses. Then just come down, check out your parapharyngeal space and masticator space. So here your pharynx looks okay. Your parapharyngeal fat looks normal. Here you have all the masticators. And again, the fat around them is relatively clean. Uh, so that's certainly nice. Here you're just catching some of those piercings again. Uh, so don't be too distracted by that. Here you have the parotid glands. Uh, so you, they're a little bit fattier than the muscle. And uh, again, you don't see any masses or anything there. You catch a few small lymph nodes in the upper neck. Here you have the submandibular glands, the muscles of the floor of the mouth here. Again, all of this fat looks nice and clean. All the fascial planes are, are nice and clean, so we're not seeing any hematomas or anything. And just do the same thing as you go down into the neck. Uh, so now you feel pretty confident that nothing is wrong with the soft tissues here. If we switch over to the axial bone windows, which I now have here on the left, we're going to check the same structures, or we're going to go from top to bottom, this time focusing more on the osteostructures themselves. So here you see the frontal calvarium here. We're going to come down into the frontal sinus. We want to check all of those walls of the frontal sinus. They look nice and normal. We come into the walls of the orbit. Again, as I pointed out on the coronals, this medial wall of the orbit is frequently fractured in a type of fracture called a medial blowout fracture. So when you have a pressure applied to the orbit, it's kind of an airbag, so to speak, for the orbit. So it decompresses that pressure, and you'll get a little trapdoor fragment with some fat uh, and fluid herniating through that. Here, these walls are nice and straight. Here you see the lateral walls of the orbit look nice. And then on the axials, you want to definitely be sure as you're checking the orbit to check these zygomatic arches. So make sure that the process off of the temporal bone there is normal. And don't be fooled, there's a normally a small suture there, which is normal. So uh, it can be a little bit tricky, but uh, we don't see any depression of that or any new fracture lines. Uh, now, as we're going through, once we get to here, we want to check the walls of the sinus, the nasal bones here. Nasal bone fractures are a little bit tricky because the nasal bones can have a little bit of irregularity to themselves normally, but we don't see any disruption there. Here you see the nasal septum, both the soft tissue component and the osseous component here. Now you've got uh, both of those. We don't see any hematoma there or any evidence of fracture, and the walls of the sinuses here look, uh, look fine, which is great. As you come down to the inferior part of the maxillary sinuses, you're going to come into a very important part of the facial bone structure and it's these two little plates here. Uh, these are called the pterygoid plates. These are very important for a type of fracture called the fort fracture. When you have those types of fractures, the pterygoid plates are, are disrupted. And so those are normal in this case. Uh, and as you come down, you know, you're checking the hard palate. We're going to see some little lucencies here around the roots of teeth. Those are periapical lucencies from dental disease, uh, but otherwise normal. Now we've come down through the sinuses and we want to finally then check the mandible. And so if we start here, go up a little bit, here's your temporomandibular joint, the normal articulation here. And you want to come down and look for any disruptions in the mandible. And if you do see a disruption in the mandible, you want to be sure to check for the second one because like the pelvis, it's kind of a ring structure. You'll frequently have paired fractures or a fracture paired with a temporomandibular disruption on the other side. Uh, this one, however, all the cortical structures are maintained. Here you see the uh, alveolar canal where the nerve comes out. Uh, just you see it kind of catch it a little bit right there, and uh, but it's otherwise normal, so we don't have any fractures there. And then be sure to check these osseous structures in the upper neck. Take a quick look at the cervical spine here. Uh, here you have the hyoid that looks nice and normal, and uh, then you have the thyroid cartilage and the larynx down here, so that that again all looks normal. As a final pass, I usually take a look at my sagittals. I usually look at them only on bone windows. I'll take a look at the skull base, the mandible and temporomandibular joints, and then the upper cervical spine because you get a nice look at alignment and you may not get a complete
imaging of the cervical spine. Now here, finally, I've pulled up the sagittal images of the face on the right here. So these are the sagittal bone windows. We're kind of uh, near the midline here. Now it's useful for checking a couple of key structures. It's a little bit harder because you don't have the symmetry that you have on the other images. In the midline structure, you can check the, you can see the pituitary fossa here, the floor of the anterior cranial fossa or plano sphenoid alley. You can see here, it's nice. There's no disruption there. Uh, you can also see the hard palate here. So you can see the structures which are perpendicular uh, to the plane, which are in the plane. So it's kind of nice. Uh, here again in the midline, you can check the cervical spine and see that the alignment is normal. Catch a little bit of the degenerative changes that we have here. A little bit of ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, but again, no fractures or disruptions. And then I think one final thing that you definitely want to check on your sagittal images is take a look at the entirety of the mandible. So go from one temporomandibular joint, which we see in a normal closed mouth articulation here, look all the way through the mandible because those mandible fractures can be extremely tricky to see. Sometimes you'll only see them on one plane and the sagittal is a nice, uh, nice way to check for that. So again, we're scrolling through the whole mandible looking for any areas of potential cortical disruption and we don't see anything there. We catch a little bit of uh, dental disease again. But as we come through, then again, the mandible is okay, and we see the other temporomandibular joint is in a normal articulation. So once we've been through that, uh, I usually don't spend much time looking at the sagittal soft tissue unless there's something that I'm trying to troubleshoot. So in summary, when you're looking at a CT of the face, I recommend you take a regimented approach going from top to the bottom. I recommend you start out with the coronals and then lean heavily on the axials. The sagittals are good for troubleshooting, but they're a little bit trickier because you don't have symmetry to depend on. With that in mind, symmetry is key. You're looking for asymmetry of the bones and the adjacent fat. Fat is extremely helpful. If you've got clean fat planes, normal fascial planes, uh, you're much less likely to have an abnormality there. So definitely rely on that fat. Thank you to everyone for tuning in today to our channel, Learn Neuroradiology. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel or check out our website at learnerradiology.com.